Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, and uh, and two canon topics. If you ain't noticed lately, canon is topic of the day under in D and D commentary, and I could not be more thrilled. I'm going to talk about canon lock, and I'm going to talk about DM canon strain. Two two canon parameters, D and D Fifth Edition canon parameters that came out of Jeremy Crawford's statement that if it is not in a D&D 5th edition source book or a D&D 5th diff- edition hardback source book, D&D, uh, dish, D&D 5th edition hardback adventure, it ain't canon. It ain't D&D 5e canon, right? Now, this upset a ton of people, right? So, one, let's talk about, like, Jord Fan. Um, Jord Fan is, uh, he's been around for a while, man. He's been doing, you know, content for years, and he does lore, right? Like, so he's like, hey, here's your Forgotten Realms lore, right? And they were like, hey, you know, and like, he's re- he's like, uh, when I heard this, I was a little surprised because, like, what this could read as is, oh, George Fan's entire channel where he talks about lore, you could throw that in a like because none of it matters, right? He's like, oh, that's not great, right? And, and there's tons of people like George Fan who their entire channel is literally lore, talking about lore, talking about monsters. And the moment they go back to anything in older editions, even though it's been carried faithfully through every single edition of the Dungeons, like the Skeleton, right? The Skeleton Warrior is in every edition of Dungeons & Dragons, every single edition, right? And they're like, oh, well, everything that was put in third, fourth, you know, fourth, second, first, it's uh, it's non-canonical now. This is a lot, upset a lot of people, right? Now, I could not be happier because one of the things is this is a meta conversation, right? Like... Canon is a meta condition of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, but meta matters, boy. And boy, oh boy, if you listen to my channel, you sure ain't gotta. You know, I gotta tell you twice. Meta matters, right? Like, is I talk about D and D Fifth Edition meta con- oh, pretty much constantly, right? Because I'm really and one of the reasons. By the way, you know, I, I know I say a lot of stuff on my con- you know unusual stuff on my channel. If you hear me saying a bunch of stuff that seems unusual. Just be aware, I share tons of, of opinions that other commentators have. I don't bother you with them, right? Like, I don't know why other commentators are like, this is on 50 other channels, but I need to say it now, right? Like, I only tell you the things that are a delta that I think are different, right? So that's, you know. All right, so so basically, um, let's talk about canon lock. So one, I think Jeremy Crawford is just flat out wrong, right? He, he just could not be wronger. Um, they're just, he's wrong, right? So one of the issues I think is, is canon lock, right? So what is canon lock? Well, Jeremy Crawford's like, if it's not in a, in a Dungeons Dragons 5th edition hardback source book, if it's a hardback source book or hardback adventure, it's not D&D 5e canon. Well, you could say that all you want, but you are flat out blazingly wrong, right? And I'll give you a perfect example of this, right? They just brought... D and D Forgotten Adventures in Forgotten Realms into it specifically. They brought this thing. They brought Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition Forgotten Realms directly into Magic the Gathering. Directly into Magic the Gathering. Right. So there is a set Magic the Gathering done. Uh, Magic the Gathering Adventures in Forgotten Realms. Well, first of all, literally those words are canon. Right. You said Forgotten Realms. That has meaning. That had like more. You know, like. That has very real, specific meaning, right? When you say Forgotten Realms. And there's a history there, right? And they're trying to play it both ways. They want to benefit from the old lore that is known by millions of of DMs and players, right? And at the same time, be able to throw anything they want out at any time. But it don't work like that, right? So, MTG. Adventures in Forgotten Realms. I have been all over this set. I, I, I bought two boxes, right? Played in two pre-releases, which gave me special cards. And then I bought $200 in singles. I am all over this set, right? I spent the weekend organizing over a thousand cards, right? And I, I know this set backwards and forwards. And I will tell you right now... It is canon as as day is long in some elements. The dragons, right? In this book, in in the actually in D and D Adventures in For, in MTG Magic Gathering Adventures in Forgotten Realms, there is a white, blue, green, red, black dragon. Those are straight from Fifth Edition Monster Manual. 
and they adhere perfectly, perfectly to the D&D 5th edition, can, uh, to the D&D 5th edition canon monster manual, right? The monster manual, the D&D 5e monster manual is canon, right? Those monsters have exactly the wing set, they have the nose, they have the body structure from the art. Then, every single one of those dragons presented on a card says Red Dragon, right? Well, Red Dragon's uh, breath weapon is Fire Breath, right? And the Green Dragon is Acid, right? Like, um, actually, I might have that wrong. I, I think it's, uh, is the Black Dragon Acid, and then the Green Dragon is Poison. I think it's Poisonous, right? And then the White Dragon is Ice, right? And, or, yeah, uh, or, or Lightning, whichever one it is. But they are spot on to the Monster Manual. Like, they, they adhere closely they adhere to the letter to the monster manual so what happens and and that may only be even true on like one or two of the cards right but i i think it's across all five dragons i'm almost positive right so here's my here's my point what happens when you say content that is outside is non-canon but it is quite literally canon right where are you at then right also brunor battlehammer he is in MTG, right? Uh, in MTG Forgotten Realms. And he is in... Um, ooh, that's a good point. I don't know if Brunor Battlehammer is in D&D 5th Edition yet. But there are. there's no question that there are tons of cards that are 100% lockstep. Lockstep canon. So you're saying it's not canon, but it is quite literally canon. Another one is Baleful Beholder. There is a Beholder. It has the size of a beholder. It has the exact number of eye stocks of the beholder. So if it is canon, how can you say, if it is quite literally canon, how can you say it's not canon, right? And he can't. And that's my point is Dungeons, Wizards of the Coast has every right to, to say this is official content. They do not have a right to determine canon. Canon belongs to the D&D community, and it is our collective understanding of canon that creates canon, right? That company does not state canon. They create content. They make official content. And I'll tell you right now, the D&D community adheres to official content very closely. And so they will, you know, create canon. They will create canon according to what the official content is, right? But you know, generally, generally they'll, and they'll, and they'll make some snips here and there too. Right. And that's okay. Because in my opinion, D and D fifth edition canon does not belong to Wizards of Coast. It belongs to the D and D community. Let's talk real quick about the DM, um, DM canon string. So this came from OGGM and, and he was talking about stuff other people were, but he said, Oh, well, what does canon even mean for Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, the moment you start a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, two different DMs are going to have different canons, right? That is 100% incorrect, right? So one, if one does, I, I have my own world, I call it Thracian. So if I start up a game and I say, hey, D&D 5th edition, Thracian, right? And the person's like, hey, I'm going to talk to Elminster. And I'm like, oh, you're in my nonsense world, Thracian. You're not, Elminster ain't here. But if we're in Forgotten Realms and the wizard says, hey, I'm going to go see Elminster, right? They, I can't go, oh, this is Scott Garibay's Forgotten Realms. Elminster isn't here. That's nonsense, right? Because that is saying, hey, I don't respect or value this game. I could have set my, my world in my own homebrew and then I don't have to say Elminster is in this place, right? Or... Uh, you know, but the, to say, oh, your character doesn't know who Elminster is, Elminster isn't here, you can't find him, is absurd, right? You put the Forgotten Realms name on your campaign. You have every right, right, to determine what Elminster says, what he does, right? But it needs to be consistent to the fact that he has been established in that world. Any player who is asking for Elminster in the Forgotten Realms world is not asking for something unreasonable. They're asking for something completely reasonable, right? And so you, as the DM, become foolish, unreasonable, and frankly, you don't know what you're doing. You know, just shove off and put somebody else in the seat who knows what they're doing, right? You, if, you wanted to, if you wanted to just not deal with Forgotten Realms lore, then you shouldn't have put Forgotten Realms on the label of your world, right? You, 
That's why you can name your world anything you want. The game fully provisions you to do that. But the second you drop Forgotten Realms down, they are expecting to see humans, dwarves, elves. Elminster is there, right? Or or there's a history of knowledge of him, right? And that's the issue, right? And that's where we run into an issue. Is, and the other thing is, I, I do all kinds of stuff that is very non-canonical. Um, one of the things I did was I was using the NPC Codex Pathfinder book, Pathfinder 1 ebook in 5th edition. And just one of my players had to frown and go, mm, I don't like that, right? And the reality is if, if everybody was digging it, I was going to keep doing it. But one person was like, I don't like you using Pathfinder 1E in your D&D 5E game. And, you know, and I know it. every D&D commentator ought to be like, oh, well, you can just shove that person off. Who cares what they want? Yeah, and this is top tier player. I care, right? All that player needs to do is roll up to Swarthmore, PA, Holmes, PA, Westchester, PA, and talk to any, any staffer at, at that FLGS. They can be in another in another game on Friday. And I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna lose one of my top players just because, you know, for a book, right? So I took it out. So that's my issue. I think DMs, they are captured by Canon. So DM, DM Canon strain is real, and Canon Lock is real. I think Canon Lock, the idea that there is absolutely 100% um, canonical cards within MTG Adventures and Forgotten Realms, proves that Jeremy Crawford is wrong. He, that, that he is 100% wrong. There is Canon material outside of of um, the D&D uh, hardback source books and adventures. That's my take. I'd love to hear yours. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.